we asked the BuzzFeed community to submit their weirdest paranormal encounters. These are the stories they sent us. Three or four years ago, I used to be in my old school's netball team. One day, we were waiting for the teacher to come so we could start training. I was in the middle of the pitch, and suddenly, the lights went out. Blindly, I tried to find my way back to the other girls, but I tripped over something cold and hard. Out of nowhere, a cold, small hand touched my bare leg, squeezing and rubbing it up and down, as if it, like me, was trying to find a guide in the dark. Out of fear, I asked, who is it? And a feminine, childlike voice answered, it's me, and giggled playfully. Shortly after, the lights came back. I was in one corner of the pitch, while the other three girls were huddled close together in the opposite corner. There was no trace of whatever thing had been next to me. I worked at a nursing home, and on one particular rainy night, I was sitting next to one of my residents that had severe dementia. Out of nowhere, she started screaming bloody murder and shaking a wrinkly, disfigured finger across the room, screaming, she's dead, she's dead. She was so out of sorts, I decided to push her around the building to try and calm her down. That's when I found out that a woman who lived on the other side of the building had just passed away not five minutes before. When I was about six, I was in the bathroom of my grandma's house playing Bloody Mary with my slightly older cousins. We were sitting on the floor in a circle. The only thing behind me was a wall, and when they were doing the chant, I placed my hand on the ground to use as leverage to scoot myself in the corner for protection. When I did that, I touched a bare foot that was directly behind me. It felt like it was actually coming directly out of the wall. I screamed for someone to turn on the lights, and when they did, there was nothing there. Everyone's shoes were on, so it couldn't have been one of our feet. My mom and I were visiting friends and family in Alabama. We were at her friend Amy's house, and they were telling me about all the dumb, scary pranks they did in high school and different urban legends from the area. Before we left for the night, Amy told us a story my mom apparently hadn't heard since she had moved away after high school. I was sitting on the trunk of the rental car as she told the story in the driveway of her house. The story was about a specific four-way stop where a woman had been hit and killed by an 18-wheeler. It was a hit and run. They say that the ghost of this woman jumps on the steps of 18-wheelers that pass through, checking to see if it's the driver that killed her. Needless to say, we had to go through this four-way stop to get home. We got closer and closer to the stop, but couldn't really see when it was coming up on account of very little lighting in the back roads of Alabama. My mom and I were joking about how glad we were that we weren't in a big truck. Next thing I know, my mom says, Um, the trunk is open. I laughed and said, Shut up, that's not funny thinking she was trying to scare me. She pointed to the illuminated light on the dashboard, alerting us that the trunk was, in fact, open. We pulled up to the four-way stop. Can you hop out and close it? She asks. Hell no, I scream. You get out and close it. We looked at each other for a moment and decided to wait until we came to a well-lit parking lot to go close it. I kept looking back to make sure it hadn't flown open. My mom drove through the four-way at an excruciatingly slow pace to make sure it stayed down. Then I got to thinking, wasn't I sitting on the trunk before we left? All of a sudden, the trunk slammed shut. I mean slams, like full force from fully open, slamming down. My mom and I had one of those comical movie moments where we turned to look at each other, turned back, and then screamed bloody murder. My mom then floored it and we raced to the nearest parking lot, frantically screaming nonsense, trying to explain what could have happened. The trunk light was still off when we pulled up into the lot of a Hardee's. We both got out of the car and went around to the trunk. On the bottom of the trunk lid, where you touch to close it, were two muddy handprints. I was obsessed with digging through my mother's bookshelves when I was a child. One day while rummaging, I found a book on the occult, so I decided to take it up to my room and make a pact with the devil. Alone in my room, I read aloud various parts of the book until I was certain I found an incantation that was sure to bind my soul to the Dark Lord. Immediately upon finishing the vow, the little overhead light in my bedroom went out. I do not mean the bulbs burnt out, it completely shattered. To this day, I'm not entirely sure if I have ownership over my immortal soul. <laughs> My boyfriend and I went camping together one weekend. 
This was back before digital cameras were a thing, so we brought a few disposable ones. We had a good day and took lots of pictures. We went to sleep that night in our sleeping bags with the tent completely zipped up. After the trip, we went and dropped off our cameras to get developed. And when we picked up the pictures, we saw there was a series of photos taken of us from inside the tent while we were sleeping that we obviously didn't take ourselves. I thought right away that my boyfriend must have had a friend come and take them as a prank, but I was looking at his face when he saw the pictures. He definitely didn't know about them either. To this day, we don't know who took the pictures. I was getting ready for bed late one night, wearing minimal clothes because it was a hot summer night with the windows open. I clicked off the bedside lamp and turned over to go to sleep. It was pitch black in my room because that's the only way I can sleep. Just as I closed my eyes, I heard clear as day the shutter of a camera click from over my shoulder. I whirled around and fumbled for the light, but when I turned it on, there was no one in sight. I shrugged it off as my imagination, and I hesitantly turned the light back off and curled up once more. Just as I completely dismissed any fears as an overreaction, I heard a low chuckle <laughs> coming from over my shoulder once more. My bedroom is on the second floor. My house was built in 1923, and my whole family has had eerie experiences from a ghost who we assume is the man who built the house. He passed away from a heart attack in my bedroom, but had a good life and was known to be a nice person, so we aren't scared of his presence. Just creeped out when we hear whistling in the kitchen and no one is in there, or hear someone walking downstairs when we are all in bed. The scariest thing that happened was when I was about 15 years old and was getting ready to take a shower. The water was running, but I had to pee first, and as I was sitting on the toilet, I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up in the air suddenly went cold. Then a man's voice yelled in my ear, What are you doing? I could feel the breath on the side of my face. I was frozen in horror, and was finally able to get the guts to bolt downstairs completely naked, to the surprise of my mother who was cooking dinner. She could tell I was horrified, but just gave me a blanket to wrap myself in and laughed her ass off. <laughs> my uncle died when he was 23. It was a violent and angry death. He took his own life. I was born a year to the day he killed himself, after being two weeks late already. Because of that, I've always felt like I have a connection with him. One summer, my cousin and I were sitting in his old bedroom, talking about what we thought he was like. We decided to try and contact him with a makeshift Ouija board, but of course, we both shouted at the other for moving it, and it was a bit of a bust. I don't really believe in the Ouija thing anyway. So we went to bed. We were woken up in the morning by a granny asking us who had broken it, that she wasn't mad, she just wanted to know who had broken it. We had no idea what she was talking about. So she led us to the front room, where a photo frame with a picture of our late uncle was on the floor with the glass smashed. The recent birthday cards from my granddad were still all propped up on the fireplace. Condolence cards from my late uncle's would-be birthday were scattered on the floor. My brother often stays up really late and annoys me when I'm trying to sleep. One night, I woke up and saw a dark, tall figure in my doorway, so I yelled at my brother to go away. The figure stayed there, just staring at me. Eventually, I got fed up yelling at my brother, so I sat up, and that's when I saw the figure more clearly. Its eyes were hollowed out and had a small head and a long white neck. I sat back in bed terrified, and the figure kind of turned and crumpled in on itself like it was dissolving into particles and made the sound of someone exhaling. I still have no idea if it was real or just a hallucination, but it was horrible, to say the least. Back in high school, my friend Amber claimed her house was haunted. After a night of dinner and shopping with a mutual friend, we stopped back at her house so that she could let the dogs out. Two weird things happened. First, the three of us searched all over Amber's living room for the dog leash, but couldn't find it. We left the room to look for it somewhere else. But when we came back, the leash was sitting on the coffee table in plain sight. There's no way that all three of us could have missed it after searching for 10 minutes. It was like someone had put it there when we left the room. Second, Amber goes to take the dogs outside, and my other friend and I are just hanging out in Amber's living room, waiting. 
All of a sudden, we hear a man's deep voice call out Amber's name. We both respond, she's in the backyard taking the dogs out. We had assumed it was her stepdad or brother who had just returned home. Amber comes back inside and we told her that her stepdad or brother was looking for her, but she told us they weren't in town that weekend. We looked all over the house for a family member, but nobody was home. I work in a Titanic museum filled with real artifacts. We usually hear little things at night, but don't even think about them. But one night, we were following the last guests out and cleaning up behind them like normal. I happened to glance through a window into the captain's bridge and saw an officer there against the back wall. He looked up, made eye contact with me, and nodded. I instantly had chills down my spine and just ran out of there. None of the guys who dressed up were working that night. And when I got downstairs, I glanced at a picture of the original 1912 crew and came face to face with the officer I saw upstairs. 